and welcome to my channel my name is Amanda Marie and over here I love to discuss all things fragrance so if you're someone that is into smelling good I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell that way you'll be notified every time I upload a video what is today today is Memorial Day I'm off today hallelujah thank God I hope y'all don't mind if I just like talk to y'all a little bit before we get into the video and I just love being away from the office and on days like this I actually imagine what it would be like if I worked from home like this is what it would feel like working from home I actually do I actually do like this feeling but are you guys liking the bob comment below let me know if you're liking the bob I wanted to give my hair a rest because I literally get up every morning and do the whole uh, TWA routine where I like wet my hair or mist my hair, put like my products in it and make it curly and so I feel like I've been doing it now for probably a good, for a while. I know it's been some months so usually I just get tired of that and I decided that I wanted to give my hair a rest and I bought this cute little bob off of Amazon. Now me personally, I like synthetic bobs. I like synthetic wigs because they already come kind of like semi styled and I don't have to do much to them. I used to have a really cute synthetic bob wig and of course I can't find it anymore and it was really really cute so I saw this on Amazon it was like $39 and it came with that little brownish reddish color I don't like that I'm a black color like I love black hair and so I dyed it with just like a did I use like a Revlon I think it was a Revlon box color that I got from Walgreens and the color took actually, it took really well. So I'm liking it. I did have to cut my bangs a little bit. Thank God I did not mess up on my bangs, honey, because I would have been pissed. Cause you know, once you cut too much, it's a done deal. Like you can't go back. So I think I did a good job. It kind of is giving me like a little, a 70s vibe almost, but I think it's really, really cute. And I don't want anything just out on my neck. It's too hot for that. I be busy at work. I don't have time for hair being all in my face. Uh-uh. Like, give me something that's low maintenance, something that I can just bump every now and again, throw on, and go. Like, I'm real simple in that way. Like, I don't do complicated anymore. You know, back in the day, when I was younger, honey, yes, I was all for it. Every time I went to work, it looked like I was walking out of a salon. But the me that I am now, we ain't got time for that. I gotta put my hair on and go, okay? I got things to do, places to go, people to see. Like, I got a lot of stuff to do. So, I'm loving this wig. If you wanna know where I got this wig from, comment down below and I will send you guys the link. Again, I bought it off of Amazon. Super cheap, super affordable. I like it. The reason for today's video is a little bit of a chit chat video. I was earlier this morning looking like for different uh, fragrance trends and perfume trends and things that people are doing now. And I thought, you know what? I read this, I found this article online by Marie Claire. I will insert a photo of it or a video here so you guys can see it. And they're uh, talking about the biggest fragrance trends for 2023 according to experts so I started reading and I was like oh my god they made some really 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 great points and um, I want to get into it but I was like you know what let's let's have a conversation about it I want you guys to chime in in the comments and let me know if you agree with the article I will link the article below in my description box if you want to click on it and read it for yourself I will do that it'll be down below. The first trend that they mentioned for 2023 is bold eau de parfums. Basically what they're saying is expect an intense and long lasting fragrance to be at the forefront this year. 
we are seeing a few of our favorite brands take a classic customer favorite and create a more enhanced or deeper version in the form of an eau de parfum versus their eau de toilette version. I'm actually seeing it go a little bit further than that. Not only see brands taking versions of fragrances that they've already released, but they're making them not only into eau de parfums, but they're making them into intense versions. They're making them into Le Parfum. They're making them into elixirs. And I'm not necessarily mad at that concept, but what it's giving me is lazy. It, it, it feels like it's not necessarily creative. It, it's giving me a tone of, you know, we're tired and we can't come up with any bright ideas anymore. So we're just gonna take something that we already made and just reformulate it, uh, switch out some notes or add some new notes, basically remix the fragrance. Like I like to call them the P. Diddy of fragrances. They will take an old fragrance and remix the hell out of it. And I don't know, it just, it doesn't feel very creative to me. It doesn't feel original. It just feels more so of repetitive. That's that's the word I want to use. It feels very much like I've been here before, been there, done that, and it's really starting to become redundant to me and just not exciting at all. You don't know what I'm talking about. I'll give you an example. Let's take Leave for example. Leave is made by YSL. So Leave was released, I can't remember when, I'll insert the date here or the year. Granted, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Leave, but there was something in that fragrance that I liked enough to purchase a full size bottle, right? And then fast forward, maybe some months on down the line, they came out with Leave Intense a few months down the road or maybe a year later, okay? Fast forward to that, to now, maybe I want to say this fragrance came out last year. They came out with Lieb Le Parfum. And at that point, I was just already tired. I was just like, what is going on? Like, how many versions of this fragrance must we have? Like, is it necessary? I do honestly feel like, in my opinion, the Lieb Intense smell just the same as the Le Parfum. I want to say the difference in the Le Parfum, it has saffron in it. So in my opinion, saffron always gives a fragrance a little bit of a oomph, a little bit of a je ne sais quoi. It makes it more exciting. It makes it more sexier in my opinion. So I do personally prefer the uh, Le Parfum over the Intense version, even though I have both of them, right? So they got me, okay? They got me. Like, I ain't even gonna stunt. Like, they got me, okay? They got me. And it's really giving me iPhone. It's giving me Apple energy. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it. You just decided to buy the iPhone 12 Pro Max, okay? And now you seeing things online and they're talking about how it's going to have a bigger screen and how it's going to be able to start the engine in your car and how it's going to be able to write your essay papers and how it's going to be able to do all that. The camera is better. <laughs> They're giving me, these these perfume brands are giving me Apple energy. At this point, I'm just wore out. So I am going to chill. When a brand releases a fragrance, I'm gonna let that fragrance sit. Like, I'm gonna go smell it and see what it smells like. Don't get me wrong, like, I'm gonna go put my nose on it. I'm gonna see what they come out with, like, six months later. Cause they, they not gonna keep doing this to me. Like, we, we not gonna keep doing this. So I'm gonna chill and wait and see if they come out with an intense version or an eau de parfum version or elixir version or le parfum version and get and see what that one is given because nine times out of ten is probably the fragrance they should have came out with in the beginning that's just my opinion but i do see this happening a lot in fragrances it has become a bit of a trend how many times can you remix a fragrance it just it just doesn't make sense to me so yes i do agree with them on this first trend which is a a bold eau de parfum or like a remix 
essentially is what I'm getting from, from what they're saying. So I do agree with this first trend. Now the second trend is fruity florals. And I don't know if this is necessarily a trend because fruity florals have been around for a very, very long time in my opinion. And here's the thing, like I don't necessarily dislike fruity uh, florals, but they're not necessarily my favorite. I feel like, and I love a good sweet fragrance, okay? I love a good gourmand. Now, I do have a hard time uh, with florals, and you guys already know this. And I have a little bit of a hard time with fruity fragrances because some fruity fragrances, for me, can come out smelling a little bit like a body spray or body mist or they can come out smelling a little bit I don't want to use the word childish um I don't want to use that word even though I said they were cut that word out okay but they can come out smelling a little youthful let me just say that youthful they smell a little youthful in my opinion and as a woman you know of a more mature age I like for my fragrances to really reflect who I am at this point in my life. I don't necessarily want to smell like a body spray. And, and I don't don't come from my head because I know y'all like the comfort. Don't come from my head. I'm not by any means like going off on body sprays or body mist. I think they are great. Just because I have grown in my fragrance journey. I'm just not about that life, okay? I'm not about that body mist life. But in my opinion, I do feel like fruity fragrances can lean a little bit more like a body spray or a body mist to me. And therefore, I don't usually go for them. I have my fair share of fruity florals in my uh, fragrance collection. I'm not gonna uh, stay on this topic too long because I think fruity florals have been around forever if i can name a fruity floral fragrance that is my favorite what would it be what would it be i don't know but <laughs> if i'm going to wear a fragrance that's like a sweet fruity floral it has to have some kind of earthiness in it like it has to have some patchouli or something in the base some type of woody notes for me to even just like really like take it serious you know i hope that's making sense and i ain't trying to offend anybody to each is own we all have different tastes we all like different things there are a lot of people that would not agree with me they rather they love sweet fruity florals that is their vibe that's what they go for and hey honey do you I ain't mad at all just speaking for myself but i don't really know if the fruity floral is really trending in 2023 i think it's something that we've been into for a very very long time so let's go to number three which is scented beauty products from strongly scented shower gels and body lotions to hair mist everyone is starting to play with scent in a slightly non-traditional manner i would agree with that statement i'm not the biggest fan of hair mist um i just because i'm a natural girl i always am very mindful of what i spray in my hair because it can be drying you know you're not supposed to spray perfume in your hair because of the ingredients this alcohol and all other type of different things that are in perfumes that actually dry out your hair and i was first introduced with the hairspray with Elizabeth and James because I love the Nirvana Black. Is it called Nirvana Black? I love that fragrance. They had incorporated that, that fragrance in that spray and I was like, oh my God, I actually bought that spray. Never used the spray to this day. I don't even know where it was because it gave off a powdery mist and whenever I sprayed it in my wigs, it would leave this like white powder residue. And so I really, I really wasn't about that but i love the concept and ever since then i've seen all different kind of brands come out with these um hair sprays hair mist you can go anywhere and buy like a fragrance set and it'll come with the perfume 
the lotion, the shower gel. That was usually how I bought my fragrances back in the day. And I'm talking about early 2000s. I would always get it in a set because I feel like I got more bang for my money. But that's something that they've been doing. But again, I have seen this whole trend of you know, hair mist and body sprays and things of that nature, more so like hair mist. And I'm not necessarily mad at that. I don't know if I would be spending my coin on it because again, I don't really spray anything in my hair. I do have is Kayali's uh, Deja Vu White Flower 57 and that's because they gifted it to me. I actually do have another hair mist and it is Love Don't Be Shy, uh, Killian Hair Mist. And let me tell y'all something, this hair mist comes off just as good as a perfume. When I tell you this hair mist can give the perfume a run for its money, okay? Like, actually bought two of them because I saw them at the cosmetic company store and I was like, they were super cheap. I wanna say I spent like $35 a piece for the hair mist or something like that. So I went ahead and picked up both of them because baby, the hair mist, the hair mist goes off. As a matter of fact, let me spray a little bit of my hair. Oh, it's, uh, let me spray a little bit on my skin. I feel like if I can spray it in my hair, I ought to be able to spray it on my skin. like. I bet. I didn't even know that there was a hair mist for Delina. I don't know if there's one for the exclusive, but I didn't even know that. I don't really just go, I don't really like look up and go, oh my God, is there a hair mist for this fragrance? Cause I ain't really checking for hair mist like that. But are y'all on the hair mist trend? Do you feel like it's something that you need or want? to help the longevity of your fragrance. I don't know, comment down below. But I would agree with the number three. I feel like hair mists are becoming a thing now. This next one is actually a good one. And I really, 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 really hope that they stay on this trend. Because if they stay on this trend, I think it can really, really go off. And that is functional fragrances. Purposeful, purpose, purposeful, purposeful, pur purpose, purposeful, pur purpose, oh my God, I can't stop. Purposeful perfumes are on the rise and it is easy to see why. Since like jasmine and lavender have been found to have calming properties and can keep and help keep the mind at ease. So when I think of a functional fragrance, I always go back to that new fragrance released by Dior. J'adore Perfume Dio. Okay, I hope I pronounced that right. So when I went to the counter to smell that fragrance, the sales associate was like, oh my God, this, this fragrance does so many different things. You can spray it in your hair, you can spray it all over your body because it has this um, oily type of substance in it that's great like a great moisturizer and y'all the fragrance smelled amazing like I'm not even gonna front like I'm not gonna hold y'all I was this close to buying that fragrance and she really sold me on the fact that you can use it in multiple different ways I thought that was just genius genius because listen fragrances are getting expensive and it just really makes sense in my head. I don't know if it does in y'all's, but it makes sense in my head that if I'm gonna spend closer to $200 on a fragrance, it just needs to do a lot more than, than what it's doing. Like, it just makes sense to me. Like, can I spray this in my hair? Can I spray this on my skin? Can I spray this on my cooch? and it not catch on fire. Like, can it do all the things? She didn't say you could spray it on your cooch. I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> so don't be going to run, don't take that perfume if you have it and spray it down there, okay? It don't go down there. Let it do all the things. Can I put this on my feet and then moisturize my feet? You know what I'm saying? Get rid of some of this ash. Like, yes, make it make sense. So I really do like that concept. I'm pretty sure there are other brands that have perfumes 
that are multi-use or multi-functional or uh, whatever but the only fragrance that came to my mind was the uh the new one from dior i think that one was released sometime last year if i'm not mistaken but i really really do like that one and i have thought about buying that fragrance several times because i like it <laughs> i like it so don't be surprised if one day you see me talking about that, that particular fragrance because I actually do like that fragrance. So the next trending topic for 2023 is sustainable scents. Sustainability isn't necessarily a trend, it's an evolution. And in 2023, you can expect to see some leaps and bounds from the fragrance industry. Brands are continuing to work on transparency in this space from ingredient sourcing, refillable bottles, and how fragrances are made and what they come in. I think that is super important. Uh, Killian, one of my favorite brands, have always been on this whole refillable bottle kick. This is from uh, Terry Mugler, have always been on this refillable bottle kick. I've never emptied a bottle. <laughs> where you know I could say oh I want to go refill it or either I have emptied a bottle and I've been like oh I like the fragrance enough but I don't necessarily know if I want to refill it you know it wasn't like my signature fragrance or something like that bun is on that trend as well there are a lot of fragrance brands that are on that you know re refillable bottle trend and i think that's amazing because we really need to take care of planet earth i don't know if you guys are aware of how things are going on this planet we're seeing a lot of things well i'm seeing a lot of things that i've never seen before I, i'm chalking it up to global warm, warming to be honest with you i think it's a really 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 amazing idea that brands are wanting to like take care of the planet now another brand that actually use sustainable products to actually create a fragrance to create a scent the first brand that comes to mind and the only one that i know but maybe y'all can educate me on that is uh eats had me braid the orange they have a fragrance called i am trash and essentially what they do is take uh foods that people have not eaten or about to be thrown away and they take those fruits and they actually um compose it and create a perfume and i actually do ha have i am trash and i think it is a really really pretty scent it's kind of like spicy and fruity it has strawberry in it but it has patchouli in it in the base so i love to see it okay i love to see it i love to see that companies and brands actually do care about the environment and things like that i think that's amazing and i think all the brands and all the companies should get on board maybe not necessarily taking food and things like that but you know making their uh, containers and things sustainable and reusable i think that is an amazing idea love that idea okay, so the next one is nouveau florals now this is something new to me and they are referencing gourmand fragrances so it goes to say gourmand fragrances think of edible vanilla aren't going anywhere but you can expect to see nouveau florals competing for their popularity we've been on a gourmand kick for so long that fresh take on florals feel modern i would look for new takes on tuberose rose and gardenia this is very interesting um and i would like to see this trend i think that if you can turn a tuberose into something edible kudos to you tuberose has a way of dominating a fragrance in my opinion and i think only certain perfumers know how to master a tuberose to wear it is not overtaking and overpowering a fragrance and it actually turns into something gourmand like now the fragrance that comes to mind where i feel like they may be talking like i feel like i can reference this statement to this fragrance is blanche bet by liquid imagineers 
and that fragrance is not a full on gourmand it's not a full on you know edible type of fragrance but it does give me the gourmand feel okay it gives me a gourmand feel because it comes off very lactonic and very sweet in my opinion and it smells like cacao it smells like cocoa and i think cocoa is i would say cocoa is an edible note and fragrance because we make chocolate milk out of it we make chocolate cake out of it we make all these baked goods and things with cacao so there is also a note of tuberose if i'm not mistaken in blanche bet but it is simply amazing like if you are not familiar with the notes because i'm familiar with the note of tuberose because it happens to be one of those florals that really really stick out to me a lot i can pick it up immediately in a fragrance and know whether or not i'm gonna like that fragrance or not but with blanche bet i'm not saying that it's the tuberose is hard to detect like you smell the tuberose it may have jasmine in it as well but it's blended to perfection there is a slightly more elevated note of the cacao versus the tuberose but they're blended together very well where you can pick up both of them but that tuberose does not overpower the fragrance and i love that i can tolerate tuberose when it's presented in that way okay i love it like that i don't think a lot of perfumers have actually mastered that crap but if they can do it like bring it on i love a good gourmand and i'm starting to love more florals like rose and um iris is one of my favorite floral notes in a fragrance and i'm starting to lean into jasmine if it's done right so nouveau florals i've never heard of that term before but i'm here for it i'm, I'm ready to see if this is something that's going to be trending in 2023 so bring it on next topic is a good one this is a good one this is a good one okay it's called rise of the dupe culture have dupes always been around dupes may probably i'm thinking dupes have been around for a while now i don't see a problem with dupes there are some influencers that will tell you they don't mess with dupes i'm not that girl I'm not her. Like, I'm going to tell you straight up, baby. If you can find you a dupe for a certain fragrance that you've been wanting, go and get that dupe. And even if we do have that coin to spend on a $200, $300 fragrance, a lot of us just don't want to. And that's the, that's the truth. We just don't want to. And I'm that, I'm that person. Like, just because I have it, don't mean I gotta spend it on a on a fragrance that costs that much. I'm totally here for the dupe culture. I'm here for it and I'm happy to see it. I hope it never goes away, truth be told. You have to have the best nose in the world to pick up on whether or not I'm wearing a dupe. And I have several dupes in my collection, a ton of dupes, and I will tell you those dupes are spot on there's no way you can tell i'm wearing a dupe unless you have a freaking phd in perfumology you ain't gotta tell people you wearing a dupe whose business is it if you wearing a dupe ain't nobody business long as you smelling good and feeling great about it that's all that matters and now i can understand why some influencers would say or I should say perfume collectors um, would say they don't mess with dupes. I think because it draws a line on respecting the perfumer. I totally get it. I totally get it because the deeper that I get into fragrances, I understand how they are art pieces. And it's like, you know, you, you are Picasso and you create this wonderful, magnificent fragrance and people have the audacity to go out and replicate it. 
and people have the audacity to actually go out and buy this replication. And it can, you know, it can rub the perfumer the wrong way. Like, I get that, I get that. But the truth of it is, there's many different variables that go into why a person would want to buy a dupe. I think the number one variable is that perfumes are expensive. I can see this trend going on for a while, past 2023, especially with the inflation inflation rising like i just i don't see this dupe trend going anywhere anytime soon unless we all end up with this just abundance of money and then again variable number two is gonna be just because you got the money don't mean you're gonna spend the money i can think of a hundred other things i can spend two hundred dollars on versus a perfume now you've been following me for a while you know i came into it and just like a lot of other influencers, we went down the rabbit hole and we were spending a lot of money on fragrances. It happens. But as I'm slowly, you know, changing the way I think about fragrances, I'm changing the way I spend my money on fragrances as well. I have no problem coming on here and telling you guys about dupes. I don't, honey. I don't. Because I'd rather you smell good and still be able to pay your rent. I'd rather you smell good and be able to drive to work, have a car to drive to work. Imagine smelling good and not being able to eat. Imagine that. I can't. <laughs> I can't. If you can spend your money on whatever you want to spend your money on. I don't want to, like I'm not trying to disrespect any perfumers. Like I'm really, really not. But I have to be realistic for what is going on in my life. There's going to come a point when we really have to decide like what's important. Is it important to have a name brand fragrance? It's not like you're wearing Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Like if you wear a dupe or a fake pair of Jordans, somebody could clock you. You know, it's not like I'm going to put on this dupe and I'm going to walk out the house and somebody going to be like, Oh, girl, you wearing a Baccarat dupe? Nobody's going to say that. Like, nobody's going to say that ever, ever. I just don't think anybody's going to say it. I just don't. I, I don't, I don't think nobody's going to say that. I am here for the dupe culture. Bring it on, okay? Bring it on. I'm here for it. Next trending topic for 2023 is musky moments. Now, I took this as a your skin but better moment. In the description, they say, I'm seeing perfumes talked about in much more personal ways and it's being worn for self-pleasure. It requires some time to explore what actually works on your skin and they recommend musk because it has a very close to the skin feel. And I would agree with that. I think I am translating this musky moment as a your skin but better moment as a, a clean girl aesthetic moment, clean guy aesthetic moment, and I'm here for it. Y'all know another 13 is one of my favorite uh, skin scents. I think it is just absolutely stunning and beautiful. No, it's not a banger, but it has this performance to it. It floats. It creates a scent bubble. It leaves a trail. It is just amazing. I live for fragrances like that. I love to wear a fragrance that reminds me of like my boyfriend's t-shirt, even though I'm single. I would love to see more fragrances trend like that in 2023. Ugh. Love it. If you guys know of any type of fragrances that are like your skin but better, your skin but sexier, clean girl type of aesthetic, drop it down in the comments because that is like the new wave that I'm on right now. I'm, I'm loving that. I'm loving that vibe. Loving it. Last trending topic is warm vanillas. 
and I'm not really sure if this is like a trending thing. We have been on vanillas for a while now. They go on to say vanilla has always been a popular fragrance ingredient. Yes, it has, and I'm gonna tell you why. For two reasons, vanilla is a popular fragrance ingredient, not only because it smells sweet, but it actually helps with the lifespan of the fragrance. Go to Fragrantica right now and look up the ingredients of every last single fragrance you have in your collection. I bet you that vanilla will be in every last one of them. And I think the number one reason is it helps the fragrance uh, to last longer. They also do that with patchouli. Patchouli helps the lifespan of a fragrance as well. So yeah, vanillas have been around for ages, ages. Like, they ain't going nowhere. I wanna make a point, this point to you guys, just kinda of like as a little a side note. Vanillas do have a tendency to turn colors. And a lot of you may think that the fragrance is going bad and that's not the case. It's actually macerating, is actually getting better. Macerating would be the equivalent to oxidizing. When you when you put on your foundation and you go outside and the air hits it and it starts to like change colors a little bit, we call that oxidizing. Maceration is what I would think would be equivalent to that because once the air goes into your fragrance, it's starting the aging process, okay? So this is, even though this is Citrus 08, this is a totally different fragrance. But when I first got Vanilla 28, it looked kinda like this, but a little slightly darker, slightly darker. But over time, it started looking like this. That doesn't mean that your fragrance has gotten old. It just means that it's starting to macerate. I have sprayed this one, thus allowing air to get into the bottle. And um, I haven't put any light to it. These lights that I have in here are super soft. It's not hot in here or anything like that. So I'm just gonna contribute it to the air that's already been put inside the bottle. But you guys, when your fragrance macerates, that is a really, really, really good thing. You want that to happen. And here's why. It just makes the fragrance better. That's why you may have heard perfumers say that fragrances have to sit in a barrel for like three months. That is what you want that fragrance to do. You want that fragrance to cook essentially because it's just going to make the fragrance even better and that's why with vanilla 28 i love when it changes colors like this because baby that thing is ready that means it is ready okay it's ready it's like a cake ready to come out of the oven and ready to eat okay ready to be devoured and i love when fragrances do that so don't be afraid if your vanilla 28 turns dark like that, like you want it to do that. You want it to do that. Just in case you guys didn't know, your fragrance ain't going bad, boo, okay? So don't throw it away. Don't throw that fragrance away. We skipped one and it is called fragrance wardrobing. And this is, this trend has gotten cray cray, okay? Crazy. You guys are all about this trend. And I'm translating this trend to fragrance layering. Even though they're referencing, they're calling it fragrance wardrobing, I'm gonna say it's fragrance layering. That's how it's translating over to me. Oh, and they put it, call it fragrance layering, perfume wardrobe, or whatever your heart desires. <laughs> okay, so we was on the same page with that. They're saying that um, they're seeing more people coming up with their own customized concoctions, they're seeing more people taking their uh, signature scents and layering it with other fragrances. Like, this is a heavy, heavy trend. And really, to be honest with you, this is something people have been doing for years. Now it's all of a sudden called, it's, it's a thing now because influencers, 
have decided to make it a thing. But people have been layering fragrances like forever. Now, I ain't never really been one to layer, and this is kind of like when I'm getting into my little bougie side. I am still that person that likes to wear fragrances on their own. And even though I have been getting into uh, layering lately because you guys are making me get into layering. You guys are like, y'all, you need to layer this and this. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I feel like I need to get into layering more, but it's not anything that I just feel like I've actually accepted. I, I'm still in that era of wearing solo fragrances, like wearing fragrances on their own and actually letting them unfold and do what they do without the presence of another fragrance. Cause then I'm like, well, I'm getting something, but is it this? Is it the Baccarat or is it the Lieb? Like, I don't know. I really don't see this trend fleeting or going anywhere anytime soon. Fragrances can become redundant. They can become boring and whoop de whoop yada yada. So I'm here for people exploring and trying new things. That's the only way you are ever gonna be creative and create something different and new, right? It's some of y'all out there right now that refuse to wear fragrances unless you're laying it with something else. I, that's crazy to me. Like, I mean, you gonna lie. Like, what you mean you can't wear a fragrance if you have it by itself, like, what you mean? You know, like, that's wild to me. But to each his own. I do feel like layering fragrances is a huge trend right now and everybody is doing it. Everybody except for me. <laughs> everybody except for me. But I do like to play around with my fragrances and layer from time to time. I'm not 100% against it, I'm, like, I'm just like, I'm like 60% there. I'm not like 100% there yet. I think I overthink it. I think I'm trying to like layer with like fragrances and that's where I get caught up. I feel like if I'm gonna layer, girl, I should just just be, you know, adventurous and just, just go with it, just go with it, go with it. See, I'm thinking it too much into it right now. I don't know, I'm, I, I'm trying. Let me know what you think about these big trending things that's happening in fragrances in 2023. I'm actually excited to see what other things are gonna be trending when it comes to fragrances. Um, I'm always looking forward to new and exciting things when it comes to fragrances because like I said, even for me, even for somebody that loves fragrances, I feel like sometimes it can be a little redundant and a little boring. So I'm ready to see how brands uh, spice it up for us. Comment down below if you have any fragrance trends that I didn't mention in this video that you want to share with us. I'm interested to see if you guys have any ideas. I know y'all have some ideas because y'all always commenting something in the comments. So comment it down below. If you're into fragrances, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your notification bells. Don't forget to thumbs up this video. It is super important for the growth of my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you are having a fabulous day and I hope you are smelling good doing it. I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.